Welcome to another episode of InRange. Today is a video about night vision, but not traditional night vision as we think about it, but what I believe is the technology that is the future of night vision and the first real commercially viable unit that brings that reality to the table, the Psionics Opsin. Now, I want to say right off the bat that this is not a sponsored video. They did not send me this unit. I purchased it directly from them as a normal consumer at normal market price of $2,600, was on their waiting list, and waited anxiously to get it. I wanted to look into what the future of night vision could be, and I wanted to prepare, perhaps, for Midnight Brutality, our upcoming night vision match in March. So, first off, let's talk about traditional night vision. Traditional night vision uses a tube that amplifies the lower light spectrum in the infrared and in the process makes it your eye able to see whatever ambient light is still visible that you would not normally see because your eye can't perceive it, but also the infrared side of the spectrum, meaning that the human eye can't see infrared, and therefore if your device can see infrared, you can see in the dark when someone else without it cannot. Now, traditional night vision has gone through generations, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, and even beyond, and newer and even more expensive versions of this type of technology are incredibly powerful and capable. That said, there's still limits to all of that. Uh, they are extremely expensive. The very low end of a PVS-14 with a decent Gen 3 tube is going to cost you a minimum of $3,500, probably more. Uh, on top of that, they tend to be reasonably fragile, and they have a tube life, meaning as they run and how many hours are put on the tube eventually degrades the capability of the device. They have a lifespan. So that's all fine and dandy but so what's been happening in the technological circles is there's been attempts now for a while to use digital technology essentially a very sensitive camera uh, to perceive the infrared spectrum but beyond that other levels of the light spectrum beyond just IR as well as normal visible ambient light and then amplify it now up until fairly recently this stuff has been pretty embryonic. It wasn't quite there yet. Without some form of external illumination, whether it was IR or otherwise, these devices could only do so much and really couldn't even compete with maybe even a Gen 2 traditional night vision tube. But now we have Psionics putting on the market this Opsin PVS-14 helmet-mounted, essentially equivalent device that is directly using their most modern iteration of digital light amplification. And let me tell you, this blew my socks off. Is it as good as the highest end of a standard or traditional night vision? Not quite, but it's 95% there. And I'm gonna show you right now before we get into more discussion about the device. I took this to a ghost town here in Arizona called Kentucky Camp and did a little tour with a traditional normal camera on top of my helmet, which of course is not night vision capable, and the Psionics Opsin. And I want you to see how this performed in what was not a zero light, but almost no light condition. Just to give you reference, walking around with just my naked eyes, it was very easy to trip or stumble or fall or not even see something and walk into it. So there was a little bit of ambient light, but it was an overcast day, night. It had been snowing. There was no moon. And this was close to the worst conditions that you would want to try to make this device work in. So here you go. So I'm in the ruins of Kentucky Camp. It is a ghost town in southern Arizona and I'm in very low light conditions, and I'm running both cameras, the Opsin and a standard head mount Mohawk. So this is the same scene with the Mohawk camera and no white light, and boom, now we have white light, standard visible white light, and you can see the regular camera does just fine, which really shows you how much light amplification the Opsin is actually producing. All right, I'm going to turn the white light off. These are some adobe ruins right here and an old truck. And I'm using no external illumination. This is truly just the ambient light that is currently visible. And I'm going to walk over to this ruin over here. Sure footing here. As you can see, it snowed today, which was a very nice treat here in Arizona. And again, I'm using no external illumination at all. No IR, no regular light. This is just the Opsin running in its native capabilities. 
and this is one of the adobe ruins here in Kentucky camp and we'll try to look inside and you'll notice we can't see anything in there because there's literally no light in there at all to magnify or amplify. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my IR illuminator and this is with IR illumination in this ruin. Of course in the standard camera you see probably nothing at all just darkness and this is with IR illumination in this ruin. Of course, in the standard camera, you see probably nothing at all, just darkness. I turn the IR illuminator off. Walk around the side of the building here. Take a look at the snowy environment. And yeah, this thing is very impressive. And here's some IR illumination just on the building. So ambient light, IR illuminator. I'm using an Inforce right now, by the way, helmet mounted Inforce. All right, uh, if you're not impressed by that, I don't know what will. First of all, traditional night vision would have, of course, a green hue or some strange color scheme. And this device in uh, even pretty almost no light conditions still provides some modicum of color. And in a little bit of illumination, such as a quarter moon, you're seeing night vision that's essentially in color through the Psionics Opsin. And uh, while it has a quote unquote refresh rate, I have been able to run with it and move with it very dynamically and I have not found that to be an issue whatsoever. There's this tiny, tiny lag behind, but the reality is it's not perceivable enough to cause a problem. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say right now that I strongly believe that this technology is the future of night vision and Psionics is, as far as I know, the first one to bring it to the market in a consumer purchasable way. Uh, I have a PVS7 with a Gen 3 tube in it. I tried to record for you through that, and unfortunately my little camera that was recording through it was giving a much darker image than it was actually able to provide, and I didn't want to put it in the video to uh, sway the results. But I will say that the Gen 3 tube provided minimally more light amplification than the Opsin, but the Opsin provided so many more features that I still would have gone with the Opsin regardless of uh, the tiny bit more of light amplification that that Gen 3 tube provided. So. At the end of this, I'm going to show you some shooting with this with an IR laser, both with and without IR illumination. But let's go ahead and talk about the features of this optic directly first. Okay, the Opsin is really a direct PVS-14 equivalent, although using digital night vision technology. It goes over one eye, normally over your non-dominant eye, which is what I'm doing here. But it provides a, a number of features that a normal PVS-14 could not. First of all, you have three buttons here, and those three buttons provide different functions depending on if you short or long press them. The front button, if you long press it, starts recording. And so you actually do video recording through this device directly. And it has a section here, a little opening, that you just stick an SD card into. I have a 256 gigabyte SD card in there, and I can record directly what I'm seeing through this device, which is how you just saw the video I showed you. A short press will give you a JPEG, just a picture. The middle unit, middle one here with a short press will do actual image magnification. So you can go from 1x to 2x to 4x. I find that to be a little grainy, but it is usable. And this back button here provides contrast settings and you can actually change the contrast. This knob is your on and off switch, which then turns, actually increases and decreases brightness. And then of course contrast here. A long press in the middle brings you into the digital, or excuse me, the menu for the features you can enable on this device. You can turn on Wi-Fi, stream to your phone, or turn it off entirely. You can turn on the GPS, and when you're actually moving with this, it actually gives you your GPS coordinates in the top left of your heads-up display. Additionally, once it gets coordinated, it'll also give you your cardinal direction. So as you're moving, it'll tell you you're pointing north, northeast, east, south, etc., which is very cool. Uh, you can turn on or off a mic, and you may have noticed a difference in the audio quality of the video I showed you walking around the ghost town, and that was actually using the mic directly built into the Opsin. Is it a wonderful production quality recording mic? No, but I was able to talk to you and produce a video through it, so that means anything is going to be sufficient. Gunfire is fine through it, clarity is fine through it, 
and the mic on this actually works very, very well. Now, one of the things is it does not have an internal battery compartment. The battery is run by a wire that goes to a battery pack on the back of your helmet. Now, if you've never used night vision before, this is not a problem because when you're using a traditional PVS-14 type system, you want a counterweight on here as well because when this is on your head and there's something weighted in the front, and nothing in the back, it leans forward on you, it kind of messes with your neck. So having a counterweight in the back is actually a good thing, and the external battery is actually not a bad thing at all, not a problem. You do have to run this cable. You could zip tie it if you want to, I haven't done that. Now, these batteries last approximately eight hours in the field, turned on, so that's a lot of battery power. And you can also just have another battery with you to slip in and out if you need more than eight hours of functionality. So this thing, is also quite light. I don't find it to be really obtrusive. And the clarity through it when you're looking through it is actually better than what you're seeing in the recording. The recording is more grainy than it looks to my eye when I'm using it directly. And of course I can't demonstrate that to you, but there is essentially a digital display in here running at 1080p and it provides really high quality resolution. It looks really good looking through it. The recording is a little grainy, but it's still more than sufficient. So on top of that comes with this carrying kit. In that you get your plug to recharge your batteries. I have an extra battery in here, a pocket to carry extra accessories like an SD card, and you can keep the unit in here to keep it safe and then put it on your belt when you're in the field. So let's go ahead now and show you some actual live fire footage with the Opsin with an IR laser, both without and with IR illumination. I wanna tell you that this night was worse than the night that I filmed Kentucky Camp. It was overcast, no moon, no visible light, literally the worst possible conditions. So what you're seeing here is representative of the worst case scenario the Opsin can do and perform with. And I was still able to do effectively quite well with it. Hopefully you found that live fire footage to be compelling. That truly was the worst conditions that you could try to run this thing in. It was overcast, no moon, complete darkness. Nothing was visible on that hillside to the human eye. The cars around us were difficult to navigate around without night vision or some sort of white light. And as you can see, in even the worst conditions, I was able to not only engage the spinner target effectively, both with active and not active IR illumination, but also a 200 yard target, really without much difficulty. This thing, rocks. One of the other benefits which I briefly touched on in the video here is that this also doesn't have a tube life. You turn this on, turn it off, you can leave it on, you don't have to worry about burning this device out. You spend $3,500 or more on a traditional night vision tube and it has a lifespan. The more hours you use it, the worse it gets. It takes a while, lasts a long time, but it does degrade over time. This does not. Additionally, when you're moving through different light conditions with this, it automatically adjusts brightness. So you can actually be in complete darkness, walk into a house that has completely lit, every light in the house is on. This will adjust and you can see through it without a problem. It changes instantaneously without any issue whatsoever. So when you add all this together, the fact that you can record with it, magnify with it, you have GPS in it, uh, you have Wi-Fi if you want to do that. Um, that it doesn't have a tube life, that it's at least $1,000 less than the cheapest traditional night vision piece of equipment. Um, I cannot recommend this device more highly enough. If you're interested in night vision, I strongly, strongly suggest that you look at this and move into the future with digital night vision. This is going to be the future, and this is, in my opinion, the first commercially viable device that actually achieves that goal of bringing something to the table that is so close to as good as the traditional night vision 
along with other benefits and features that I can't imagine going with traditional night vision, at least for my purposes, ever again. Once again, I want to remind you this was not sponsored content. They did not send me this. I purchased this directly. So this is a very fair and honest review. And the only way that I can do that is because InRange is completely no sponsors, no overlords, no advertisers, completely demonetized, only sponsored, and supported by viewers like you via Patreon and Utreon directly. And I want to thank all of you for keeping this channel alive and making it possible for me to do reviews like this, as honest as they are. This one happens to be a glowingly positive one, and I really, it is nice to be able to do that once in a while. Um, if you can, please consider doing it. If you, uh, if you can't, I do understand. Just subscribe to one of my multiple distribution points, hopefully Utreon, not YouTube, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.